Welcome to the Michael Paris Podcast. And hello, listeners, and welcome back to the Michael Paris Podcast. My next interviewee is Amy Tariq. Amy was recently featured number two on the top 20 entrepreneurs list on Forbes. By the age of 23, she became the number one best-selling author of A Life With Health, which can be found on Amazon. Amy is currently writing another book called Panic, Germs and the Truth Inside American Mouths where she has partnered up with Dr. Gladys McCary, the very creator of the word holistic and the pioneer behind the whole holistic movement. After suffering near-death experiences for having a heart that would beat faster than 200 beats per minute, Amy took charge of her life and made health a priority. She now empowers professionals to live their very best lives by removing toxic triggers, maximizing energy, focus, and productivity. With that, I welcome Amy Tariq. Amy. Welcome to the KKNW on Seattle Radio, and welcome to the Michael Paris Podcast. Hi, it's so good to be here. Straight to my first question, what is a microbiome? So the microbiome, it's basically a community of microorganisms, for example, bacteria, and it includes the good and the bad bacteria. And when there's an imbalance, that's when problems arise. Are the microbes throughout your body different? If so, why did you choose to focus on the oral microbiome and not, say, the microbiome inside your gut or the rest of your body? So there can be different microbes depending on where we look at in the body. I specifically chose the oral microbiome in this case because a lot of people don't realize how the problems in our mouth can actually affect everything and anything. And this includes our heart rate to disease like diabetes to even chronic illness, like even chronic fatigue. So this can be a missing piece to many people's puzzle. And whenever they're at a loss as to what to do with their health, um, sometimes people don't think about their mouth. Wow, that's really interesting. Although the microbes throughout our body are vastly different, uh, are they related? And if they are related, how would this relationship work? And how might this relationship help us understand and fight diseases? Yes, absolutely. The oral microbiome is related to our gut microbiome can even be considered an extension of the gut. So our mouth environment is extremely important in affecting our digestion, um, the rate that we absorb vitamins, um, how our saliva breaks down our food so that we can absorb vitamins in the gut. And sometimes if there's um, a pathogen in our mouth, if it makes our, it's okay, it can be okay while it's living in our mouth, but sometimes whenever it makes our way into our bloodstream through maybe there's a slight cut in our gums or makes our way into our stomach. Interesting. Sometimes that's how the problems can occur. Yeah, I was actually just reading online and a doctor who works in the field of, of microbiomes mentioned that you can take a swab anywhere in the mouth and he can tell you exactly where you took Uh, the swab based on the fact that these microbiomes, although they live in an ecosystem, they're all in your mouth. They, depending on where you swab, they have extremely unique signatures and footprints, which I found quite fascinating. Yes. That's what I love about this. Our, our oral microbiome is so unique. It's more unique than a fingerprint. It's indescribable how unique it is. And I will add just to understand the scale of magnitude here, uh, this ecosystem is so enormous that if you were to collect all the microorganisms that constitute your microbiome, you would outnumber your human cells 100 to 1. And although this environment is so dynamic with so many moving parts, they still yet work together to form a unique fingerprint of who you are. And that is to say that if you were to sample your uh, microbiome in 10 years from now, it'll be more similar to how you are now than it would be to anyone else's. And another important point of piece of information here is that, you know, even by looking at how your microbiome formed, we can tell whether you were brought to this life, whether you entered this life through a vaginal canal or C-section based on your initial uh, exposure to bacteria. So there is so much information we can derive by looking at our microbiome. It's truly amazing and fascinating. And this is a field in science that will continuously progress. That's a beautiful way to say that. And also it's interesting because, yeah, there's so many microorganisms around us that we're more of a microorganism than we are human because of how many we have around us. (laughs) Interesting. 
So how would you say the oral microbiome specifically has the power to affect our entire body? When your microbiome is balanced and a newly introduced pathogen comes inside of it, it might not make you sick. But if your microbiome is disrupted and unbalanced and it already has some issues like inflammation or it could be anything, exposure to that same pathogen, it has the potential to make you sick. Hmm, that, that's really interesting. Um, I do want to mention that the Human Microbiome Project sampled a number of individuals and uh, mapped their microbiome over time. And what they've noticed is that healthy individuals uh, maintain a stable and consistent microbiome as opposed to people who have diseases or uh, are suffering from specific conditions notice a drastic change and an imbalance in their microbiome. So one thing to note that's important is having a stable and consistent microbiome is attributed to good health. Absolutely. There was a time when I would actually frequently get strep throats, and this was before I knew about all of this. And as soon as I switched my toothpaste and um, parts of my lifestyle and really created a harmonious oral microbiome, I've never, ever had strep throat or really any other illness since then. On to the next question. How does the oral microbiome have the power to affect the entire body? Oh, there's so many diseases that can be caused by an imbalance. There's even a specific bacteria that scientists have found in the mouth that can cause obesity. And then um, other diseases can also be influenced by an imbalance, such as diabetes, um, cardiovascular disease, even erectile dysfunction, premature birth, and even pregnancy complications. What are some of the things we do that negatively affect the oral microbiome? So there's a huge temptation to just want to kill all germs. It's like going into a beautiful garden and instead of just picking out the weeds, we pick every beautiful flower and just bulldoze a whole lot. So we don't want to overkill the germs in our mouth by using um, strong mouthwashes that promise to kill 99.9% .9 of germs or really strong toothpaste that might be filled with other toxins. We want to keep a balance between the good and the bad germs. Just like in our guts, we understand that there's good and bad bacteria in our guts. So we eat things like yogurt or probiotics to sort of up the good bacteria. We sort of want to do the same thing with our mouth. It's best to use like a prebiotic toothpaste without any of those toxic ingredients. And as a mouthwash, simple water with salt or even um, do a coconut oil pool. And this is how you can make sure that your oral, oral microbiome stays balanced. All super interesting stuff. And for those wondering how they can achieve a healthy homeostasis and live in harmony with their microbiome, here are some tips and pointers that I've collected. First and foremost, you want to eat a plant-based diet with lots of fiber. You want to eat fermented foods every day. Uh, this includes stuff like kimchi, kombucha, tempeh, uh, miso. These all have beneficial bacteria that help you fight off the bad suckers. Next, you want to consume a lot of prebiotic rich foods. So this includes sources like onions, garlics, artichokes, oatmeal, rice, potatoes. Uh, next is probiotics, stuff that's uh, like yogurts. You want to stock up on those probiotic yogurts. And just to clarify the difference, uh, prebiotics are a special form of dietary fiber that actually act as fertilizer for your good bacteria. They're an energy source as opposed to probiotics are actually live bacteria that need to be kept and nurtured until they're put into your mouth and consumed by your body. And those help to aid the fight of the, of the microbiome war. Next would be uh, choose uh, lots of polyphenol rich foods. So polyphenols are micronutrients that are packed with antioxidants that act as a fuel source for your microbes. Uh, examples would include nuts, seeds, berries, olive oil, coffee, uh, tea, especially green tea, red wine, blueberries, pomegranates, cherries, dark chocolate. Uh, you guys can Google them. There's, there's tons of rich polyphenol foods, and these are really good. They help decrease uh, inflammation in your body, and they stimulate growth of the good bacteria while inhibiting the pathogenic bacteria. Next, you want to include collagen in your diet. So collagen forms the basis for your hair, skins, and nails, and, and connective tissue throughout your body. Uh, unfortunately, over time, due to genetics and environmental issues, your collagen count in your body decreases. So, uh, and, and collagen is crucial for the lining in your gut, 
uh, thus uh, creating a healthy environment for your gut microbiome to flourish. Next, you want to limit your sugar intake. So uh, sugar and artificial sweeteners uh, really do feed uh, bad bacteria. Yes, absolutely. So the number one thing would be to cut out excessive sugar. I know it's hard because Americans are like almost the number one sugar consumers in the world. But this really disrupts the oral microbiome and it can cause things like thrush. And then there's also excessive smoking and drinking. Thrush basically makes a tongue look all white. It's also a sign of candida overgrowth. So it's a symptom of many different causes. It's basically a symptom of systematic inflammation throughout the whole body, which sugar does play a huge role in. So we want to make sure our tongues are clean and healthy because it shows us how the rest of our body is doing. Ah, next is the topic of antibiotics. So just a little side note here, but antibiotics were discovered in 1928, and it was one of the biggest breakthroughs in biology, and it, you know, if not biology, one of the biggest breakthroughs in human discovery. And we were finally able to treat and fight one of the most common and prevalent causes of death. Now, the problem here is, is that we've over-diagnosed antibiotics, and we're starting to see that our bodies and our bacteria are evolving to become immune to even the most aggressive form of antibiotics. And we're developing issues like superbugs that you know, we have to find really unique measures to deal with. Anyways, I digress. Uh, we should be mindful of antibiotics because when you do take antibiotics, you're essentially carpet bombing your entire body. You're killing good bacteria. You're killing bad bacteria. So you really only use it when you need them. And also use it for the entire time you're prescribed. So if your doctor tells you to take antibiotics for eight days, make sure you take antibiotics for eight, eight days. Because if you stop your treatment halfway through and you're feeling good, you know, what the, the issue here is that you're killing all the weak bacteria, but all the strong one is you're being kept alive and they will multiply and create a much stronger strain of whatever it is you were suffering from before. Anyways... Uh, I want to thank you, Amy, for all your time and expertise. This has been a wonderful podcast. Thank you so much. I loved being here. And for those who aren't following Amy already, make sure to follow her on Instagram. That's Amy Tariq. Follow her on Twitter. That's Amy Tariq. And follow her on LinkedIn, which is the Health Optimizer. Cool name. Uh, as for me, it's Mikey Perez on Instagram, M-I-K-E-Y-P-E-R-E-S. And it's Michael Perez on LinkedIn. And it's uh, Michael Paris, I believe, on Facebook as well. Thank you for your time. Stay safe out there, everyone. Until next time.